Hello, and welcome back to The Hat Historian. In this video, I will be talking about a hat that has become inseparably associated with a certain French emperor, the Bicorn. A very distinctive hat, the bicorn was originally formed by taking a large round hat and folding up the brim on the front and back, creating two points over the shoulders, much like the tricorn which it is directly related to. As opposed to it, however, the bicorn was an almost exclusively military piece of headgear, very rarely seen in civilian life. Emblematic of European armies, and those influenced by them in the Napoleonic era, it nonetheless endured for over a century as part of various dress uniforms, with a few surviving to this day. The bicorn began to appear in the second half of the 18th century, out of a slow evolution of the tricorn from which it is descended. As I have covered in the video dedicated to it, the tricorn was the main hat of choice for men for most of the century. Originally almost perfectly triangular, as time went by and fashions changed, the front point progressively shrank. Some theories suggest that this change in shape was to make it easier to carry under one's arm, as the aristocracy often did, with their extravagant wigs making the hat unstable when worn. Whatever the case may be, by the 1780s, the front point of the tricorn was often reduced to a simple fold. Military officers, who had to purchase their own uniforms, and often had them tailored to their preference, would want to follow the latest fashion of the upper class and would have their cocked hats made with the slightest of curves on the front, essentially forming a bicorn, particularly in France where the style originated, or in the United States who wanted to imitate their French ally and differentiate themselves from the British from whom they had just won independence. Bicorns also became popular in the Royal Navy, where gentlemen officers wanted to appear modern, and this contrasted with the British Army which retained these pseudo-tricorns. This can be clearly seen in this screen cap from the series Hornblower. After a while, this style trickled down to more common troops, especially in France, and spread to other neighboring countries who wanted to show that they had a modern military. The bicorn was originally worn athwart, pointing parallel to the shoulders, with the horns on either side of the head. However, troops very quickly started wearing it slightly turned to the side, much like the previous tricorn, in order to avoid knocking it off when shouldering their muskets. French terms for this, en colonne for perpendicular to the shoulders, and en bataille for parallel, shows the practice of wearing the hat turned when marching in a column, and then turning it back to the standard way when on the battlefield, to present a more imposing figure to the enemy. The fore and aft style, though technically against regulations, was popular amongst the men, and even some officers, for the rakish, carefree look it gave. Eventually, it became official in some circles, with Royal Navy lieutenants adopting the style, as opposed to captains and admirals who, usually being older and more conservative, stuck to the traditional style. They also felt this allowed them to be more easily recognized compared to their subordinates. These fore and aft hats were considered practical too, as they could be folded under the arm when not used, sometimes leading them to be called chapeau de bras, or arm hats. In France, the field marshals of Napoleon wore them in different styles according to their own preference, and one can see them on paintings with the various styles coexisting side by side. Of course, one cannot talk about bicorns without talking about their most famous wearer, Napoleon Bonaparte. He made it his trademark, to the point where his simple silhouette wearing the hat is enough to identify him. When he was an officer in the Revolutionary Army, Napoleon wore the standard cocked hat of the time, like any other officer, which slowly became more and more like a bicorn as the century wore on. As he moved up the ranks, and became a general during the Italy campaign, he wore the regulation large bicorn with a gold embroidery and national cockade, which he would sometimes wear at a slight slant. He also wore a heavily ornamented uniform hat during his time as first consul, but outside his official duties, he preferred a simple black felt hat, with only a cockade as ornamentation, which he called Chapeau Francais. After becoming emperor, he permanently adopted this simple hat which, when combined with the plain grey coat he wore, fed into the image he wished to project as down-to-earth leader close to the rank and file of his men. 
His hats were made by famed haberdasher Poupard, each costing roughly 60 francs, at a time when the average French daily wage was 1 or 2 francs. Napoleon ordered on average 3 or 4 of them per year to replace those that got worn out or were lost during battles. He often had his valet Constant, who coincidentally had the same hat size as him, break them in for him. He even brought four with him into exile on St. Helena. In total, about 120 hats were made for him, and roughly 30 survived to this day. The Napoleonic era was sort of the golden age for bicorn wearing, but as the wars raged on, it became more of an officer's headdress. Regular infantry switched to shakos in the early 19th century, with the British adopting it around the turn of the century and the French in 1806. Other countries soon did the same. Bicorns then became a marker of authority and became taller and more ornamented. French, Prussian, or Russian officers wore hats that were ever taller, ever larger, ever more extravagant, with embroidery, plumes, and other decorations. With the end of the Napoleonic Wars, however, styles changed. Much more frequently worn fore and aft, and manufactured for it, which had the advantage of making it easier to store when not worn, in the 1820s it became a little more reasonably sized and decorated, and started to be relegated to dress uniforms, as officers replaced it in the field with more practical caps, kepis, and other less cumbersome hats. It was however popular amongst the leaders of the South American Wars of Independence, notably Simon Bolivar. One should note that two groups resisted the trend to wear the bicorn perpendicular to the shoulders, the French gendarmes and the Italian carabinieri. Both these corps continued to wear their bicorns parallel to their bodies throughout the 19th century, with the French wearing theirs until it was officially replaced by the kepi in 1905. With a smaller size and more ornamented cockades, the bicorn became a fairly widespread full-dress hat for navy officers and diplomats of most western countries. As it has always been more of a uniform accessory, it was never widespread in everyday civilian life, and thus, as opposed to the tricorn, was more resistant to the fashion changes that saw the appearance of more practical forms of headgear. It continued to be used by most navies and civil servants' uniforms until the First World War. After the conflict, a few more traditionalist nations, such as Britain, France, or Japan, continued to use it as part of their highest form of dress, but even they eventually abandoned it after World War II. Already rare, the bicorn faded into history. It subsists nonetheless in a few niche corners, all full-dress uniforms. This is notably the case in Britain, where it is worn by select officers of the armed forces for grand occasions, like the Trooping the Colour. It is also worn by the governors of some British overseas territories, as well as high-ranking officials of the Commonwealth. These bicorns are usually richly decorated with plumes. In France, it is part of the parade uniform of students at the prestigious École Polytechnique, and is part of the grande tenue of the members of the Académie Française. Some state ushers in Switzerland wear it as well, and so do pages in the Netherlands for royal occasions. All of these wear it fore and aft, but the Carabinieri, which I mentioned earlier, still wear it side to side in their full dress uniform, and it is depicted in the logo used on signs to indicate their stations. Grandiose symbol of Napoleon, mark of military authority, now quaint element of traditional uniforms, the bicorn has certainly had its mark on history. So I hope once again that you enjoyed this video and will join me again soon for another hat. Until then, I tip my hat to you.